On today's show, we're talking mind control. Actually, how to control your mind in these fearful times. Plus, this. <laughs> Are you okay? We got that, whatever that was, plus a lot more on this week's show. So stay tuned, we're getting through this together. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. You know, I was reading this week that a study came out saying we spend 11 hours a day on our devices, our phones, our tablets, our TVs, our computers. And you know what's on all those things right now? Bad news. Counts of people that are sick and dying. Counts of millions of people losing their jobs. We just watch those tickers constantly go up. And so we face a battle every day for our thoughts you know, to take control of what we're thinking about. The temptation is just to watch that ticker and freak out all the time. Uh, that's why I get out here and I walk so much, you know, to get the body moving. You know, fear can paralyze us. So it's important to get the body moving, but it's also important not to let the mind get paralyzed. So it's important to fight as well to get your mind in the right spot. I've got an easy tip for you this week that'll do just that. Let's go in and talk about it. All right, everybody. So the mind is the battlefield for anxiety, and yet the mind is so hard to control. Don't believe me? Don't think about a purple elephant. What are you thinking about now, right? A purple elephant, okay. The mind is hard to control. Uh, just think about your daily life. You get 20 compliments and one criticism. At the end of the day, what are you thinking about? Laying your head on your pillow, you're thinking about that one criticism, right? It is so easy for our minds to gravitate toward the negative and what's wrong. And um, it just makes sense, right? It's kind of adaptive. As you're going through your life and your day, there are certain things that need your attention, and those are usually the things that need to be fixed, that you need to navigate around. And what goes right with your day doesn't require your attention, and so we don't pay attention to those things. But I want to submit to you today that it's really important, especially for those who are anxious or fearful, to take the time to focus on what is right. Again, it's a lot easier to do this then say, no, 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 not gonna think about that, not gonna think about that. We all know that doesn't work. It's a lot easier to replace those thoughts with something else. What is that something else? That's what we're gonna talk about today. And before I tell you, I wanna show you, oh, Jess! Could I have the joy jar, please? <laughs> Jess. What happened to the joy jar? I thought it was a jar. Well, I'm using it for something else. Oh. Well, it's a joy cage. It's a joy cage now. Okay, so this is a visual representation of what we're gonna be talking about today. It's a joy cage filled with things that we are thankful for. We keep them in here so they don't get out and escape. And basically, at one season in our lives, Jess and I uh, set aside a time every single day to write down something we were thankful for and we'd put it in the joy jar and discuss why we were thankful for it. This one says, I'm thankful that Bill and others encouraged me to play tennis because it's a highlight of my week. And so when we're feeling down, we can open up the joy jar and look at all the different things we have to be thankful for. And I wanna encourage you to do something similar because just think about it, grateful people, satisfied, content people, are happy people. Those are the people you like being around. And it's actually scientifically proven that people who show gratitude are happier. And that happens via three different routes, okay? So the first way that gratitude leads us to happiness is it increases our social interaction. Think about it, grateful people have empathy and compassion and they're part of this support system that welcomes them in and takes care of them. Gratitude strengthens your interpersonal relationships and they're gonna be there for you and you can rely on them. So that leads to happiness. Grateful people 
are more fun to be around. Second, and this is gonna sound familiar to the other weeks, but gratitude also increases levels of serotonin and dopamine in the brain and helps regulate stress hormones. It takes the region of the brain responsible for guilt and shame and violence down a notch, and it actually has been shown to increase our ability to sleep well, which of course leads to happiness. Now, third and finally, it actually creates new neural pathways, cognitive ruts in your brain. Here's the thing about your brain. Your brain is kind of lazy and it likes to save energy whenever it can. So it's very good at operating in a rut. Gratitude is a skill that you have to practice. And when you practice it, it creates a different rut. And so instead of getting stuck in ruminations about all that could go wrong, might go wrong, feels like it's definitely going to go wrong, all of a sudden your brain's new rut, the new norm, is throughout your day to look for all the things that you can be thankful for. And thus you have a much less stressful and a much happier day. So how do you put this in practice? How do you do this? It's actually really simple. Get a jar, oops, <laughs> or a cage, a locked cage, and make it a ritual to set aside time every day to write down what you're grateful for. Or maybe if you're more of a traditional person, get yourself a journal and set aside time to write in that journal. Uh, here's another great thing that you can do. You can write a letter. Make it a point once a week or once a month to write a good old fashioned snail mail letter to someone that you want to thank and then send that letter to them. Or better yet, give them a phone call. We're gonna interview somebody who's got some great ideas for us in just a second who's really good about calling and expressing gratitude, which I think is awesome. And then finally, pray about it. I'm a Christian and actually a Christian pastor, and I believe that an important part of my faith is connecting to God in prayer, just telling him what's on my heart. And scripture actually talks about being thankful in our prayers to God. Philippians chapter four says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And so the Bible itself has this prescription against anxious thoughts, and it involves taking them to God, to our Creator, to our Father who loves us, and with thanksgiving, presenting them to Him. So a few ideas for why gratitude can be such a powerful way to gain some control over your mind, some mind control, remember? Okay, now I'm gonna go right to our interview next because I'm super excited for you to meet one of the most grateful people I know, a, a master of what we're talking about. This is Laura Klosterman. Laura, we're so glad to have you on today. For those who don't know Laura, she leads a ministry that is phenomenal. It feeds 600 kids a week, 16,000 meals last year to people who were in need. And of course, you're looking for new ways to do that now that we're in the midst of a pandemic. But, uh, you know, today's show is all about you can either take on negative thoughts head on and try to crush them, or you can replace negative thoughts with positive thoughts, thoughts about other people, thoughts about what you're thankful for, thoughts about how to serve and love people. And yeah, maybe talk about that in your life, how serving and loving other people has helped you with your anxiety or worries or fears. I know this pandemic um, has really given us all like a level playing field and a, and a lot to consider um, kind of the fear of the unknown and it can bring about a lot of anxiety, but, you know, just um, kind of stepping beyond our own thoughts of what could happen and maybe making a phone call to a friend we haven't talked to in a long time, or um, maybe writing a letter to someone or doing a kind act um, for someone can really help us to get our um, minds off that, that anxiety. So you have some interesting uh, disciplines in your life or practices that um, you use to um, stay grateful and remind yourself of all the good things in life. Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. I think um, several years ago, I remember sort of a turning point. I have to give credit to God because I was just feeling down in the dumps. This is a couple years ago. I was feeling down in the dumps and not really seeing a whole lot of good things. And I asked God to help me be more grateful. And um, 
I believe he gave me an idea and the idea was just simple. It was to write down every day, everything I saw that he had given me as a blessing. And it could be little tiny things like enjoying sitting with our dog on the couch or um, really great cup of coffee in the morning. It could be big things like um, figuring out how to do something with grace packs or, um, you know, any of life's moments. But I started writing and I'm not much of a journaler, but I decided for a week I would write down every last thing I saw that was a blessing. And after a week, I didn't really want to stop because I couldn't believe how many things during a day that God gives to us. Like I'm outside right now and I can feel a breeze. Those are those kind of gifts that he gives us. Um, And so for me, it changed the way I think about things. All credit to him. Because just like everyone else, you can have a, I can have a really bad day and kind of mumble and grumble around about this and that. But for the most part, I really believe God's changed my way of thinking because he's helping me to see things with a little bit more clarity of how much he loves me. What the truth of his word is that he sent Jesus and, um, For me, at least, just writing those things down has really been a life changer. And you're really good at expressing gratitude as well, which I think is key, because inexpressed gratitude is perceived as ingratitude. Now, I can't take credit for that thought. That was, I think Andy Stanley said that. But I, 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 as a human being living on the face of planet Earth, want to thank you for not just feeling gratitude, but expressing it. It means a lot to people when you take the time to say thank you. And you recently did that with me. You gave me a call out of the blue and said, hey, it's been a year since uh, I visited your husband in the hospital and you just wanted to say thank you. And I really thought that was amazing. And maybe as we wrap up the interview today, we wanna talk a little bit about your husband and what happened uh, because some people watching the interview right now might be thinking, oh, these, these ideas are okay, but how can you really fight for positivity or gratitude and love in the middle of the darkest time? But you went through a dark time really recently. And looking back on it, you see how even in the darkest time in your life, God was using it for good, right? Sure. Um, a year ago in April, April 16th, I came home and um, started getting these robocalls. And I didn't answer the phone first, but when I did, uh, it was the um, Martin County Sheriff. It was Deputy Day. And um, he told me that my husband had been um, hit by a car while riding his motorcycle and um, that I needed to go to Lawnwood Regional Medical Center as quickly as I could. Um, John was in critical condition. He had many broken bones and he had brain trauma. And in fact, um, the first couple days, I couldn't even recognize him. And in those hours when I really didn't know if he was going to live or not, um, I could feel God's presence with me and he comforted me. Um, So a whole year has gone by and God has done amazing things. We would never want this accident to happen, but I think I can speak for John and for myself that because of this accident, we have seen amazing things. We've seen a bigger view and faith in who God is. And we're happy to report that John is doing so well today. And actually, you and I and John and Jess got to go to Israel, what was it, six months ago. And man, John was the highlight of the trip. He was a trip. and uh, He is a trip. <laughs> we had so much fun. And uh, we're so fortunate and blessed to call you friends. We are grateful for you. And uh, of course, we're grateful for Jess as well. She's a trip as well. <laughs> And uh, we're going to segue into our last 
segment for this show. We're going to check in with Jess. She's got something creative going on. And uh, yeah, let's see what Jess is up to. Thanks, Laura. Here's Jess. Looks like you're working on a really practical craft project today, huh? Yeah, I'm turning old shirts into face masks. Cool. Let's see how. Good. All right. I want one of my own. How hard can sewing be? Let's give this a shot. Hey, Bill. You know what this reminds me of? No, what? Shootout at an old Western movie. Okay. What's this for? Run. Two. Okay, okay. Guns down. I win. Ha <laughs> ha. What? I thought we were getting through this together. See you next week. Oh. I'm bleeding. I'm trying to aim for I'm you. I'm bleeding. <laughs>